an ancient football, a pair of boots that you can't find anywhere else, and a ball that costs more than a car, are just some of the crazy football products that I'm going to be testing out in today's video. But first, I've bought this £500 football mystery box because in today's video, I'm going to be testing out some of the most interesting, crazy, and unique football products that I own. And I'm hoping that in this box, I'll be able to find something that can add to my collection. Let's get it open. All right, first things first, let's see. Whoa. Okay, there's a lot of good stuff in here. Right, first up, we have this ball. Now, this is gonna look epic. All right, I'd say this is worth about 130 pounds, so that's a good start to the mystery box. All right, next up, I can see the France logo. That is not, is that the new France shirt? That looks epic. Right, so far, it's looking good. Whoa, we've got a pair of goalie gloves now. These look sick. This mystery box is going well. Now we've got a pair of football boots. That is a strange box. Adidas, okay. That is a fancy box. What an, uh, mate, these are insane. Some blue Copper Monday Owls, wow. These are actually so sick. I've never seen anything like these before. Mate, this mystery box is so good. I didn't even know these existed. All right, there's one special box that I'm leaving to the end because that looks insane. But next up, wow. Is that the new Germany kit? I don't know, but it looks awesome. All right, this mystery box has definitely provided value for money so far. What is this thing? It looks like a shirt. Oh my days. There it is. That is so sick. Borussia Dortmund shirt. So overall, I would say that this mystery box has been a massive success. So now it was time to test out the first product. So for this first product I'm gonna test out, you might be thinking there's not much special about these boots at all, but I can assure you that's not true. Right, so these might look like a normal pair of yellow Nike football boots, but there's actually something very special about these. These are match issued boots to Man City Sergio Gomez, which basically means they belong to him. And the reason that I have them instead of him is because there was a little test that I wanted to try because I wanted to see if the boots that Nike give their players are any different to the boots that Nike give us. Let's test them out and find out. So this is Sergio Gomez's boot and this is one that I bought myself. It's the exact same football boot, except the sole plates are different, but they're both sole plates I'm pretty sure you can buy in the store. So there's no difference there. Just looking at them, can't really see much difference on the boots, apart from the fact they say 21, but he's written that on himself by the looks of it. It all looks pretty much the same, I'm not gonna lie. The padding inside is exactly the same. Just from looking at them, I can't see any differences in the way they're built. So I laced up the boots and they didn't feel any different. Player issued boots, let's see what these things can do. There is no doubt in my mind that Nike give the pro players different boots. I'm only joking, they're exactly the same. Oh. Oh. So yeah, from this test, I think it's pretty clear that Nike give pro players the same boots as us. Maybe if you're Ronaldo or Mbappe, you might get special treatment, but there seems to be no difference here. So now we know the truth about player issued boots, but this next football product is quite simply one of the most bizarre footballs I've ever seen. Just look at that. Now this crazy ball is designed to, well I assume, train goalkeepers, but I've never seen anything else like it online. I went between the sticks and tested it out. Oh, yes! Oh, that, that literally, the bob will help me save that there. So this ball is crazy, but to save shots from this thing, you're gonna need a good pair of gloves. And these are the most expensive goalie gloves in the world, so let's test them out and see if they warrant the 190 pound price tag. Yeah, 190 quid is a lot of money for a pair of goalie gloves. Let's just go in nets and see how they do. Oh, right, world's most expensive goalie gloves. Interesting product to test out. Are they worth the price tag? I definitely don't think so. I think you can get just as good gloves for cheaper price. Right, so before I test out the first football ever made, I want to take a quick look at a very special pair of football boots. So Nike are probably the biggest boot manufacturer in the world. They've made football boots such as the Mercurial and the Hyper Venom. But what were the first pair of boots they ever made? Well, I've got them right here. Let's take a look. These are Nike's first ever pair of boots. And I'm not gonna lie, they are the softest leather I have ever felt. That leather is so soft. 1971 is when these came out. So 
So I'm not sure about you, but I think these boots just look so sick. And it's crazy to think that this pair right here is what started Nike's incredible rise in the football boot market. So Nike's first ever pair of football boots were great, but what's it like to use the first football ever made? Now you may think the oldest football in the world looks something like this. This is a ball from the 1930s, about 100 years old, but this is brand new compared to some of the balls that I'm going to be testing out next. So before I can show you the ancient footballs that I'm going to test out, we need to take a look at a current football and see how we got there. So this is a football that we see in 2024, perfectly round, designed for optimal performance. But the balls that I'm going to try out are literally thousands of years older than this. Let's take it back 100 years and we have what a lot of us see as an old football, brown leather and gets super heavy when it's wet. But we need to go back even further than this. This is what some people think of the first football football ever made. This is around 500 years old and it was found in England in a castle belonging to Mary Queen of Scots. It's made out of a pig's bladder and pig's skin and would inflate to about half the size of a modern day football. But the balls that we're going to test out are much older than even this. Before this ball, the ancient Aztecs were the first to create a rubber ball. And when Christopher Columbus arrived in South America, he was so amazed by this bouncing ball that he took one back to Spain with him. Going back another 1,000 years to the year 500, this is an example of what a football would have looked like then. Before that, the French would make footballs out of beard hair and wine corks, which is one of the balls I'm going to be testing out today. The ancient Egyptians would make balls out of papyrus. And finally, in ancient China, thousands of years ago, this is one of the first known footballs ever created, a chin loan ball. This was used in the ancient game of Kuju, which has a close resemblance to modern day freestyle football. And it's crazy to think that this would have been played literally thousands of years ago. And this is the second ancient football that I'm going to test out today. So history lesson over. And now I've come to a location not too dissimilar to what they would have used many years ago. I've got two of the ancient balls with me the chin loan ball made out of wicker and also one the way the French did it made out of wine corks but minus the beard hair of course. Let's test these things out. This is literally probably as we know it the first known form of football that exists. So I had a little mess around with the chin loan ball and it feels like it's going to break every time you kick it. This is really difficult as well. But I guess that's what happens when a ball is essentially made out of wood. It definitely isn't easy. Right, so the chin loan ball is really difficult to control. But seeing as it's the first football ever made, I'll let them off. But that's enough of the chin loan ball. Let's test out the way the French did it, the wine cork football. Imagine walking to the pitch with your cork football like this. Right, so we have the wine cork football. This is what the French would have used, something along these lines. Let's just see what it's like to play with. It looks really cool. So yeah, let's just start off a few touches. You know what? Wine corks have actually got a bit of bounce to them. So yeah. Whoa. You know what? Apart from just looking really cool, this ball was actually decent to use. I'm not sure exactly how they would have made it back in the day. And I'm not sure what part the beard hair has to play, but it's crazy to think that something like this would have been used so many years ago. Now, to finish off with this ball, let's smash it. All right, let's take a shot with the wine cork football. This is gonna hurt, let's go. Oh. Now, before we move on to the final section where I'll be testing some of the rarest, most unique and most expensive footballs to ever exist, Next up, I'm gonna show you a pair of foot boots that I've got in my collection that's a one of one. I'm the only person in the world with this pair because I got them custom made very expensively. It's the Air Force One football boots. So I had these boots custom made to see what the most popular trainer of all time would look like as a football boot. The Air Force Ones are actually insane, man. Definitely one of the coolest products I've got in my collection. They're really not great for shooting, I'm not gonna lie. He says as he absolutely rattles it into the top bins. Right, I'm gonna have one more shot. If this is a worldie, Nike need to make these. Now these Air Force One boots may be a bit of a gimmick, but is there more to be said for some of the most expensive footballs ever sold? So this ball is honestly one of my favorite balls of all time and usually costs around a thousand pounds, but I managed to get this one for just 30 pounds. It's fake and it's on eBay, but it looks just like the real thing. So let's test it out. Let's start with a ball that just looks incredible. Now, honestly, I think spending over a grand on a football is crazy. So this 30 pound replica is a great alternative. It's obviously not as good as the real thing, but it's definitely close enough.
Right, the Louis V ball, I mean, this is probably the most expensive football to exist, but equally, it's probably the worst football to exist. So obviously, I couldn't talk about rare footballs without mentioning the Jabulani. I, of course, have the standard Jabulani, but I've also got a £1,000 prototype Jabulani. This is a prototype of the Jabulani, and I bought it for around £900. It's super rare and just looks sick. And she'll stand this pink Jabulani is probably the rarest ball. I've never seen one sold, but I'm sure it's worth in the thousands. So this is another rare version of the Jabulani that I own. It's a New York Red Bulls version. I got it for just 80 pounds. Thought it was quite unique, so let's test it out. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, testing out some of the most unique football products in my collection. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.